Today I'm going to be showcasing checkpoints in Game Builder Garage. Here we can see I have not gotten that checkpoint yet, so if I die, I'll go back to the spawn point. And if I come over here, I can collect the checkpoint. Makes a little sound, raises the flag. Now if I die, I will always respawn back at this checkpoint. You can always make that box a little lower, but I like to have them drop into the world, that way they can't fall through. The only thing with this is if I collect this apple here, and then I die, it does not actually reset the game, because resetting the game would actually reset the entire code, and you would not be able to set up a checkpoint system like this. So what it does is upon your death, it will teleport the player back. One other thing to note is if you use this damage detection system that I've shown off before, I can increase myself to have, let's say, three hit points before I die. So now if I go in, let's say I get the checkpoint, and I take one, two, three hits, now I'm dead, and I go back. So that allows you to have multiple hit points and checkpoints within your level. This checkpoint system uses the bullseye and markers. This is a really good way of detecting logic, and it actually helps us simplify things a lot. This has more so recently been discovered, but going back, you can ditch the old digitizer system that we had set up for our sprite. So this is literally all you need for a sprite with walking, idle, and jump animations. This is it. This is the entire thing. So I'm definitely going to be doing a tutorial on this because this is huge for sprites. This uses not even half the nodon. This is just like a quarter of the nodon that it took in order to do that old stuff. If you're interested in any other tutorials, I've got plenty here on the channel. You can go ahead and check out how to make a HUD and some basic enemies. But let's dive right into this. The first thing we're going to need here is to keep track of our damage on our player. We never actually want our player to die in the level, we just want to teleport him around, so we're going to need to set this up. Now I've shown this off before. This is basically, I've got a touch sensor here that is linked to the player. The settings on this touch sensor. There's the box. This is only on touch, that way he doesn't constantly take damage while he's in range of an enemy. In the check what section, you're going to set whatever you want him to take damage to. So whatever the fancy objects are that your enemies are made out of. So mine were aliens, I just have robot on for the fun of it. But mine were all aliens. So he will only activate this touch sensor when he touches an alien. This touch sensor also acts as your player's hitbox. So here we can see that this is even smaller than my player, just because of the size of my sprite. I've got a simple sound effect coming out of it, so that way the player knows when they take damage. Here I've got a counter. This counter is going to be the amount of lives you want him to have before he restarts the level. This starting value is your number of lives, so we have one life here. If we want to have, let's say, three lives before he dies, we just put in three. Nice and simple. We want to have a constant of zero here, and then an equals comparison, because we are looking for when this counter hits zero, that this equation will output. So zero equals zero is what we're looking for. Next up, let's set up a teleport back to the beginning of the level. Go into objects, launch, slash destroy, slash attack, all that, and then go to teleport object, and then we want a teleport exit. Let's go ahead and make this kind of big and just kind of sit it up here. It doesn't need to be linked to anything. The number one setting that you're going to want to change in here is this teleport physics. You're going to want to turn that to reset, especially if you're making a 2D game. So by resetting the physics each time you restart, your player will not be able to slowly slide out of bounds. For now we're going to leave this visible, and let's leave this at A. Next up we're going to do just about the exact same thing, but we're going to do it for where we want our checkpoint to be at. Let's go ahead and set up another exit. This exit is going to be B already when we open it, so that's perfect. Make sure you turn off physics there. Link both of these up to Y plus Y plus if you want your checkpoint to be higher up so you fall down. That way you don't clip the world. I've had a couple issues where even if I made it really tiny, I would still just fall through the world because my character was so big. So I would put those on Y plus Y plus just to be safe. Since I'm going to have a texture out here, I'm just going to grab a box. Uh, we'll figure out the texture sizing later on, but for now we'll make it that size. Go ahead and link your teleport. Then we're going to want to detect when the player hits this box. Go ahead into sensors, grab a touch sensor. Go ahead and make this whatever size you'd like. I would make it the size of the checkpoint probably. If you want it to be really tall, that way 
if they walk anywhere within, you know, if they jump over it or anything, they'll still get the checkpoint. You can go ahead and do that. Go ahead and link that up. And then we're going to go into the settings here. This on touch and touch, they're not going to matter for how we're doing it because we're only going to basically allow it to output one time and then we're going to lock it out. So while touched is fine. In the check what, make sure you turn everything off. I would turn on your person if you're using a person. That way your enemies can't interact with your checkpoint and mess up your game. So I would just turn it on person if you're the only person in the world. For simplicity here, I'm going to take a wormhole entrance and link it up to my touch sensor. I'm going to grab C, that way I know it's for checkpoint. And I'm going to link that up. You don't have to do this, you could run this wire up to this system up here if you wanted, but if this is going to be your midway checkpoint, then you're not going to want to have this long link going all the way across this whole thing. So I would recommend using a wormhole for that. Next up, let's go ahead and set up our checkpoint system logic. Let's grab our wormhole exit, that way we don't forget about it here. Set it to C. Go ahead and grab yourself a counter. Run your checkpoint into your count up. You won't need to change any settings in there because you want it to have no limit on it, that way it never loops back. Next up, go ahead down here to output and other and grab this marker display. We're going to be using the 2D marker display because we need two forms of logic to be detected here. In the settings on your marker display, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on like 0.5. Let's see how that sits. Yeah, let's go ahead with 0.5. Basically, this will change the size of the circle. And I'll explain more about this here in a second. Go down the middle and grab your bullseye. And how this bullseye works is it detects how much of this circle is within it. So we can see that right now we have 0 0.07 all the way down to one. So the more of this circle that's within the bullseye circle, the higher the number. Basically what we can do is we can move this circle around in here and when it gets within this bullseye, we can know exactly where it's at and send out an output from that. Make sure you make this box one quarter of your marker unit and put two of them here at the top, just like that. Go ahead and link your counter up to your X down here. When this counter sends a signal, this blue dot will move over to here and then once we die we'll move the dot up so depending on where the counter's at we're going to have two stages here go ahead and grab your teleport entrances so here you go your teleport entrances right there we're going to need our a and our b obviously so make sure they say as such make sure in the teleport what section we're changing it to player and let's let's just leave the box cylinder and sphere all on for now that way if your player consists of those they'll teleport too but for this one i only need the person and make sure both of them are set accordingly link your a teleport up to this first bullseye and link your b up to the second bullseye now all we have to do is grab the output from when we die bring it over here to our y this will move us up so depending on if we've triggered the checkpoint or not, it will be in a different spot down here and then pop up when we die. Every single time we teleport back to either the start or the checkpoint, we wanna make sure we reset this counter, that way we still have lives. So go ahead over here and run each of your bullseyes into the reset on your counter. Lastly, we're gonna to wanna to connect our teleports up to our player. Now, if you are out of blue lines, you can always grab a little box and put it on top of the player's head or anywhere on the player and then attach those teleports to that box. But I've got a couple lines left, so I can just do it like that. If we go ahead here, we can see that if we die, we go back to start just like we should. And if we go over here to our box, this white box is our checkpoint right now, and we touch it and then we die, we will respawn back at the checkpoint which is perfect. Now let's say we want some sort of sprite on the checkpoint that'll change. That way we know, hey, he's hit the checkpoint or hey, I've hit it. Uh, so let's set that up now. For my testing, using this bullseye system is gonna be the best bet here for us. Once again, go down to other on the output, grab your marker display, and we're just gonna wanna move object because we're just gonna need two different points here, basically. We're gonna need either he's hit the checkpoint or he hasn't. Go ahead and link this up to your counter. Make it kind of a good size, but make sure this is a square. That'll kind of help you out. Go ahead and copy your bullseyes here. Once you've got both your bullseyes the same size, make sure they're not touching the square. You can verify that by seeing that that's zero, so we know it's not 
anywhere within there. I've got my sprites right here for both my checkpoint states, so before and after you've touched it. Now if you wanted to link these up, you could technically add some more logic in here and have them cycle between like different frames and animations and have the flag flags actually wave, but I kind of want to give you some bare bones stuff, that way I'm not using a ton of node on. And you guys can always take from these tutorials and add on and make your own twist to it. Out of our very first marker, we're going to put it to our before we've touched it flag. And out of our second one, we're going to put it to after we've hit the checkpoint. Go ahead and link both of these flags up to your box. Um, I actually need to make sure that these are the same size. And they're not. So it's good I double check that. So go ahead and link them up just like so. And last thing I want to do is I want it to play a noise when we touch it. And only the first time we touch it. I don't want every single time I respawn for it to play a noise. So go ahead and output, play sound, sound effects. We're going to link it right up into our final flag design node on. This node on only plays one time. I'm going to go to system sounds and do a success. Sure. Once this square moves over, it will play this sound and it'll stay over here. So it'll keep this flag present. So we can see just how simple this code is. I mean, this is like hardly any node on. So it's it's quite the improvement here, especially with that sprite cycle that'll be out soon enough. So if we go ahead, we can die here. Just doing some final tests. Once I touch the flag, we get a nice little noise. If I come over here and I constantly run into this guy, we can see that I'm not having any issues of clipping out of bounds, which is perfect. And everything behaves exactly how it should. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to know more about the marker node on, Loop and Snoop has an amazing video on it that he showcases a bunch of different ways to use it and some of the different ways to produce logic out of it. The marker node on are definitely going to help clean things up a ton. I already it's I've been able to simplify a bunch of my stuff. So a couple tutorials have been pushed back because I'm like, "Oh, I can I can do it this way now, which is great." But I'm definitely going to be showing you guys how to set up stuff like this cuz this is so much easier for a sprite. I mean, you can see it's, it's just a couple note on. I figured I'd get out this tutorial here as quick as I could just because I kind of had an epiphany on how to do it and set it up and I just kind of rolled with it. And we've got a ton of codes from you guys. We're going to try and play them. We've got a couple different ideas on how we're going to tackle all the codes because we want to play them all. So look forward to that. We definitely want to showcase all your guys' levels and games in some form on this channel. So stay tuned for that. We're planning on playing them all tonight, uh, Saturday night. So I am looking forward to checking out what you guys have been working on. Thanks for watching.